Hello everyone, it's been a while between trips. Um, now we're out of lockdown and all the restrictions have been eased, which is great. So we're able to go out and explore again. Um, we're off to Lake Wallace, which is um, situated in Walla Warang, um, which is about say 10 minutes, would you say 10 minutes from? 15 minutes from Lithgow. From Lithgow, so West. it's the Bathurst side of Lithgow. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so it's a free camp spot. Um, there's some really good reviews about this place. Um, you can go kayaking there, it's good fishing. We brought our rods over. I think it's council run and you can stay for a maximum of 48 hours. Yeah, I've read that too, yeah. So 48 hours um, and yeah, they've got toilets there, showers, um, facilities there. You're able to do fires, which is great as well. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a fantastic spot. So we'll take you there and show you around. So we've made it here to Lake Wallace. Um, now it looks like it's a it's a free camp, which is great. But there's also and it's also pet friendly, so you can bring your dogs, which is great news for a lot of people. Um, there's also dump points here, which is great, and also toilets um, and showers, which is fantastic. Now they do limit your time here uh, to. 48 hours stay, so you can't do a long stint. But So we've um, just parked the van. We're just gonna check the aspect, see, you know, if we wanna be facing north, south, or wherever. I think north is nice this time of year. Um, but anyway, just, yeah, a few people pulled up. As you can see, it's, I think it might get a bit busy. There's an inner area, which is um, quite spacious. There's a few people set up in there. But yeah, there's a little jetty there where you can fish off. Um, and it's just, yeah, you see a few people kayaking out there. So it just looks like a really pretty spot to camp at. So, um, yeah, we're just going to get settled in. Oh. Alrighty, we've set up camp and we're ready to rock and roll. So we just um, had a bit of lunch and we're um, just going for a walk now to have a look around. So as you can see, here you go, there's a bit of a, um, a jetty here. So it's quite, quite a good spot for fishing. Um, we've seen a few people come and go, so it looks like it's quite a popular area for the locals to come and have a fish and a kayak. Um, and maybe a swim in the warmer months. But oh, here we go. Lincoln's found a puddle. A big puddle. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're just going to go have a look around. There's a playground here, um, which we'll show you. There's also um, a toilet block, which we're not quite sure where it is. So we're going to have a look. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's not that busy. It is Friday afternoon. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure it might fill up this afternoon for weekend campers. But if you have a look, it's just gorgeous, the surroundings. It's really peaceful, lots of beautiful trees around for shelter um, and heaps of camp spots. Also being a free um, camping spot, you don't really expect bins, which is really good. So you don't have to take your rubbish away. Bin! There's bins scattered throughout the campgrounds, um, which is great. Like I say, I don't know, every, 
don't know, 300 metres or so, um, which is really good. That way you don't have to take your rubbish away. In the inner, you see like a little race course or like a little track field. And you, there's also it's the home of the Wallerarang Baseball Club, which I was just saying is quite unique having local facilities at a place where you can camp. Um, so yeah, well obviously it's run by council, so you are able to do that sort of thing. And now over in the distance here, it looks like there's a coal energy station in the distance, as you can see. So. They might burn off every now and again. You might see some steam every now and again. Sienna, what have you found there? I've got um, a lot of pine cones. I've got one, two, wow. three, four, five, six. I've got six pine cones. That's and wonderful. And I found it under the, under the trees. tree. Yeah, great. So as, as we all know, pine cones make great kindling. So we might chuck those on the fire tonight. Okay, so um, along the water's edge, you'll find um, like some barbecues, barbecues over here and some picnic tables, a picnic table. There's another one sort of beyond the playground over there. And there's a really cool little playground here, um, which will keep the kids entertained, which is great. Um, but yeah, standard, I, I think they're electric barbecues which is great. So if you happen to set up camp sort of along this side, it's sort of where the, the lake ends. That's uh, sort of swampy along there. Hey, Mom, can you hold this? Sure, sweetie. Um, yeah, so it's not, it's plenty of, plenty of areas to, to set up camp and just, um, it's, it's quite a nice little campground. So yeah. Thumbs up, really, really good. So you'll find as you're driving in um, to Lake Wallace, you'll there, there's a little road that veers to the left, and there you'll find the dump point. So there's the dump point right there, um, and then you'll also find the toilets. They're not visible, um, yeah, because they're sort of there's these big trees that hide them. So yeah, as you drive in to the left, um, you've got your toilet blocks, which are just here. Um, most of the camp spots are quite far from the toilet, so you'd have to hop in the car and, and go into the toilets. But so pretty standard toilet block. You've got a couple of showers at the end here. They're fairly clean. And um, yeah, so I imagine this comes to get cleaned every now and again by council. But yeah, standard block. wander around and um, we've just checked out the surrounds it's really lovely along here it's just so peaceful it's really like just feels like your kids can roam and you know there's no busy roads nearby and all that sort of stuff so um, people are starting to head in for the weekend later on um, we're just going to start the fire um, but overall I think it's a really pretty campsite it's just really really chilled um and yeah and camper trailers caravans tents they're setting up swags over there um so yeah and, and it's also because it's dog friendly it just opens it up to a lot more people um we did step on a bit of dog too over there so yeah uh, if there is a sign yeah it's good to clean up after your dog's mess in the warmer months i mean it is quite warm today about 22 degrees you could probably go in the water, but I'd say it would be quite cold. It's all fresh water. Um, and yeah, a few people fishing over at the jetty. Just a really lovely sur surround. So I'll just get Pete to, I don't know, swivel the camera just so you can see what's around and see how lovely it is. Okay, so it's fire time, guys. It's meant to be raining later on tonight, so we thought we'd enjoy a fire a little bit earlier today. Um, so yeah, we just gathered some rocks around. It's always good to sort of get a perimeter going. You don't want it sort of um, catching a light elsewhere. Not that it would, because there's, you know, it's generally sand around here. 
Um, but at this campground at Lake Wallace, um, they don't particularly have fire pits as such. It's just basically, you can see how it, you know, people Watch just it. make their own little fires throughout. Um, so yeah, so just making my little kindling tower here. We're going to set it alight. Make sure this little fellow oh. doesn't get anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> He's got the Famous lighter. last words. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's um, it's it's good to know that you can light fires because it's quite rare to find camp spots in New South Wales um, that where you can um, have fires. So, so yeah, so we're going to light this up. Here we go. And Lincoln, can you put this on the table? Good boy, over there, on the table, on the table. Well done, no. Archie. Ah, <laughs> on the table. It's very tasty. I'm gonna really do it. Oh, that's so. a better little technique. <laughs> this is oh. really clever. Yeah. You've done this before, haven't you? Just throw <laughs> it. And then it so the town is about a 10 minute drive from here so if you need firewood or you know you need more supplies stock up on on things it's easy as so it's 10 past five we've had our dinner we're early birds so this is what camping's all about playing celebrity head being silly together lincoln's doing lego on the thunder bucket over there Thunder. He's had a bit of a stack down the stairs already, haven't you, Lincoln? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hasn't been the best for him, the poor little fellow. No. Nah. So, yeah, fire's going, and I think we're going to wet a line very soon down at the jetty. <clears throat> All right, so off we go. We're going to see if we can wet a line and catch a couple of carp or something, because it's fresh water there'd be carp in here um so yeah we're gonna see if we can get lucky hey Mom, linky what if, what we're gonna if we don't? oh well if we don't that's no, all good no for you tomorrow night, well that's right and it, it's just a lovely place to have a fish anyway so we're gonna have a real good crack oh it's starting to sprinkle a little Lake Wallace um, and we've decided to go and have a look at Hassan's Walls Lookout. Um, it's got some really nice reviews and it looks like um, you have a really nice view of you know the valley and the mountains um, so yeah I'd imagine it'd be quite spectacular during sunset or, or sunrise um, but anyway it's about 8 30 in the morning and um, we're on our way up so take you up there and have a look. Drive up is quite smooth, it's not a paved road as such, it's just a gravel road, um, but you've got some nice um, cliff views of the bush in the distance, it's quite lovely. Um, so yeah, it's not, it says it's three minutes away, so it's not a, it's not a long drive in at all. Right, so we've made it up the top it's um it's quite quite a looked after area here so there's wheelchair access which is fantastic um so yeah it'd be great for prams and kids as well so we're just going to head on over i think there might be a bit of a track and some railings and we'll get to see a, a really nice view of the mountains 
get a little map here of what you're expected to see um, and yeah you get some good information here there's like a, some tables here you can have lunch here you packed your lunch yeah and it's just um looks beautiful in the distance so we'll take you over to the lookout yeah, yeah. it's a gorgeous little it's nice look out isn't it so they've made this platform it's like a little walk and um yeah some nice nice sights in the distance there you can see some nice rock formations really peaceful okay so it's not until you actually get to the edge of the platform where you realize wow it re we really are high up here considering the drive up wasn't so steep so it's pretty cool the, this is the highest scenic um lookout in the blue mountains area which is pretty cool i don't know if you can see in the distance over there within that rock formation there's a fenced off little cave so i'm not sure if you can get to it or not hundreds and hundreds of meters of just gorgeous countryside and all the valleys and the mountains so definitely worthwhile coming to check out if you're in the area um, yeah, on a nice sunny day, it would be pretty, pretty spectacular, I'd imagine. I mean, it's really spectacular even if it's um, cloudy, but it's just a beautiful spot. So if you have a look over in the distance, you'll see the platform that we were on. Yeah. So this is the, the cave that we said um, has that little gate. So it is fenced off. Very cool. All right. This is quite awesome. So as you can see, because it's springtime, lots of nice wildflowers are blossoming. It's just spectacular, isn't it? It's amazing. So I'm going to show you inside. Okay, hang on a sec. So here we go. Here we are. As you can see, there's like a little cave where we're about to get in. This is the outside. And if you come in. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And there's some um, love locks in there. Yeah. People have put their love locks on there. And then a little picture here. Yeah, it looks like someone's put a boat um, right here. Had a fire here. I don't think you yeah. could see it. See this is spectacular. Thing in that boat. Yes. So Ooh, yep, of a, course, a, where there's a, a cave, there's a always tags and graffiti. A paw print. print. Wow. Pretty amazing. So we have a look here. Holy smokes. How amazing is this? It's a man-made balcony right here. I mean, sorry, a natural, naturally made, formed balcony. You'll find these lovely little love locks. So, which is pretty cool. Because when, when people want to declare something like their love for each other or if someone's passed away and they put it all lock there's one here for somebody yeah so it's quite and you lovely you can also sit down you can sit down here yeah you can sit down here it's great like a little you can sit down so if here. you're if you're afraid of heights i would not recommend this because the drop is quite far down as you can see I'm scared of heights but I'm still yeah huh? it's pretty pretty Mom, amazing pretty spectacular white... what's that white thing oh it's like a little pole I'm not sure Hi. Oh. gorgeous so peaceful 
worthwhile checking out. So you veer to the right as you're going in toward the platform at the beginning of the platform. You can sit here. And um, yeah, you can come and check out this cool cave. It's beautiful views. All right, so now we've decided this is just within the town of Lithgow. Uh, we've decided to come and check out the Blast Furnace Ironworks. So this used to be a running ironworks factory back in the day. I'm not too sure exactly what era it was, but I'm sure there's an information plaque that we can check out. Um, so yeah, piece of history here within Lithgow, which is great. And look, from the campsite, the lookout was what? A 20 minute drive, which was um, it's just so convenient. Everything's sort of quite close. To, um, and this would probably be another 12 minutes out. So yeah, if you can see, it's all the old structures that used to be here. And little tunnels too. Tunnels that you can see down there. It says here, so this was an engine. It was the largest engine in Australia. So they're the foundations of the structure that housed, I'm reading from the plaque here, um, a horizontal reciprocating steam engine. So it was manufactured by Thompson and Co, which would have been Australian company, owned company. Wow. So look at this. So this would have been a part of that engine as well, right? So there's little tunnels that go in great. So yeah, they, it's all interconnecting. Pretty amazing. Oh, my hands are flowers. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, all the flowers are blossoming. It's November, Whoa. so it's lovely time of year. Pretty amazing. All right, so I've just read on the plaque that this was all built in 1906 through to 1925. So yeah, quite impressionable looking at the structures from, from close by. So there was a, this is a boiler house and a gas main. Can we go down here? Can we go down here? Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, so it's good they've built these railings, these walkways around the structure and it's great that they've really preserved it. So if you have a look, what a large structure. That was all built in 1906. Can we touch this? Can we touch it? Touch what, sweetie? Touch that. Yeah, try not to touch it. It's a very old building. Yeah. Pretty cool. So you can walk around this. You can see a lot of it sort of... Yeah, just put it down though because it's a part of history. And we don't want to disturb it all. So it looks, you know, looks like chunks have fallen off it. Um, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, council would come every now and again to check to see if it's all um, safe and, and secured. Yeah, so large chunks have come off, as you can see. Pretty cool, pretty amazing. one of the local um, here and he was saying that this was all excavated so this was all underground at one stage um, and they've re in recent times they've excavated it out to preserve and show so as you can see there's loads of tunnels and I'd imagine a lot of the ironworks from here 
I'd imagine a lot of the ironworks from here were transported to Nunes back and forth, I'd imagine, because there are tunnels over at Nunes. Um, and yeah, these tunnels are, wow, they're amazing. Quite big. That all went through, yeah. Like Pete was just saying, even with the glowworm tunnels, um, all of these tunnels were probably all interconnected to transport, you know, there were the shale mines over at Nunes and, um, and you know, ironworks, so yeah. Big industry back then. Structures. When you think of the engineering that went, you know, into this, and you think of all of that back for back then, it's quite, you know, it's quite involved. Um, so yeah, this is a historic engineering marker. It says there's a plaque up there. So this is where they would store raw materials. So, so all the raw materials that they needed for iron making would get stored here. So I'd imagine they'd be put onto a way bridge um, and put onto some kind of railway and transported around which is pretty amazing when you think about it. If you go around, um, you'll notice just going through Lithgow, even in the playgrounds, they have little um, sort of railway trains with carriages, just the short ones. I'd imagine they're old relics of how they would transport all the ironworks and raw materials, etc., from the area. So um, you see that a lot around the Lithgow area. All right, now we've done our little bit of exploring today. And now, what are we doing, Sienna? Going fishing. We're going fishing. Now we're just using soft plastics. We're hoping to catch a fish today. Do you think we might? We'll see about that. All right, let's head on over to the jetty. Okay, so it's our last afternoon here at Lake Wallace, Walla Warang. It's been a great little trip, just a weekend away. Perfect if you're coming from Sydney or from down south or from inland, um, there's lots to do around. There's lots of cool little things to do. Just a tip for Firewise, we, there was a lady that walked past the Sienna and I went out for a fish and she did mention to Pete that you, you can get fined if you've got fires on the ground. So unfortunately we had no idea. So anyway, we didn't get fined, which is fine. Um, but if you're not aware, just, make sure that you bring a little fire pit um, we've got our little karcher one there which is just perfect because it's a foldable one it's quite handy this is it over here that's quite good um but yeah so just yeah so just make sure that you bring your own fire pit no fires on the ground otherwise you might get fined now the weather's starting to look a little bit grayish and um Looks like we're going to have rain tonight, so we might not have the fire on for too long. We just might venture in for a couple of card games and whatnot. But look, it's been wonderful. If you want a nice weekend away where it's nice and quiet and your know, kids can run around, get messy and yeah, it's great. It's a great little spot. Pete, what would you rate it out of 10? I'll give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, same. I would think 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing for being a free campsite. Ripper, really. Don't go wrong. I'll definitely um, come back. So, next come back. one, I think, yeah, we'll definitely come back. 
But I think the next one we might do is Lake Lyle, which is just down the road. Um, and then we've got Shoal Bay coming up. So anyway, we'll take you through those little adventures. Um, the weather's starting to warm up now. So yeah, we're going to start coming into all the summer camping and all the activities that that has to um, offer. So all right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, and keep, keep exploring, keep camping and keep loving the outdoors. We'll see you guys for the next one. Bye. <laughs>